OK, to explain that, let's start with the electron. If I have an electron moving through space with a particular momentum, I can de describe that with a matter wave, and that's shown here. The wavelength of that wave depends on the electron's mass. The chance that I find it somewhere along its trajectory is proportional to the intensity of the wave. And as you see, that's flat, so it's equally probable to find it anywhere along its trajectory. So now let's think about a neutrino. One way of making a neutrino is through nuclear beta decay. So a neutron decays, it makes an anti-electron neutrino. The neutrino is neutral. So I can try and write that as a sum of two neutral states, anti-neutrino 1 and anti-neutrino 2, each of which have a specific mass, so m1 and m2. So the matter wave corresponding to m1 is shown in green. So that's because it's got a certain mass, it has a certain wavelength. And this is m2, which has a different wavelength because it's got a different mass. So I'm an electron antineutrino when these two things are in phase. So right at the beginning, I'm an electron antineutrino, and right at the end. In the middle, where the phases are not the same, I'm only partly in an electron antineutrino state. So now I can plot the intensity of the electron antineutrino part of this um, neutrino propagating through space. And it's 100% electron antineutrino at the beginning, and then it's disappearing until all the electron antineutrinos have disappeared, and then they reappear again until I'm 100% electron antineutrino over a distance of a kilometer or so.